soft light to the sea, and thinking these sad and strange jewels, more and more and more stars have gathered, the obliterating the settlements of the Milky Way and filling up the whole sky. As far, far away in that dangerous look, stars are silently shooting and falling and finding their fate, among these seers and figures of the moon. I went to sleep, and in my sleep I seemed to 
Pete. And Peter, how nice to be with you. Uh, tell me, who's, whose idea was all this? <laughs> well, it came about, uh, you know, with, with Paul Cameron. He, we, we, uh, he, he'd put a lot of projects on in the um, Rhythm Six Festival some years ago. And um, we had a meeting and Paul wanted to, to put a project together. And um, then we started looking at possible collaborators, someone who's, um, you know... Someone who's... Well-versed. Um, <laughs> someone who's yeah. here. <laughs> and, 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 you know, Peter was the perfect, perfect choice, really. And Peter had contacted me because he'd been playing with Steve Smith and was interested in Conical. And oh. so it was, a, it was a random connection, really, wasn't it, Peter? I emailed Pete to see if he could give me any lessons of Conical. Big mistake. I've tried yeah. that too. Yeah. <laughs> and he told me to sort off. <laughs> and, um, I, and I thought, well... But I, 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 I'm going to have to play with them now anyway. That's the first lesson of Conor Cole, of course, is that you reject anybody who wishes to learn it. That's right. <laughs> that's right. It's amazing, yeah. isn't it? That's true. Pete, um, that's how they... I think that's how it's. Yeah, pretty much that was the... And having, just, having just enjoyed the music, terrifically, for about an hour and a half or something, um, you know, it, the, the really naff question to ask you right now is, well, how much of that was improvised and how much of that was composed? Mm. Funnily enough, I don't think it's a very interesting question, that, because, the, you know, there's an old line which says that composition is a very slow form of improvisation and improvisation a very fast form of composition. Mm. But how much of that was improvised? <laughs> yeah, well, I'd say a good amount. I mean, you know, we, we're really trying to focus on creating roadmaps more than specific. Obviously, some themes and stuff like that become anchor points, but, you know, there's a, there's a lot of freedom in there, That's actually. Good. And, and, and a, yeah. theme, a theme might, try and, might migrate from one roadmap to another place might it one on a different night it could possibly go because i remember weather report used to do that sort of thing a fair bit mm. you know theme would turn up in the middle of something else in a different meter blade slower faster i think I it think. will although mm. this is the first night so we, it's first night as yet we don't know first night. <laughs> and well so the, 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 yeah. that statement uh, also uh, we had some st a few starting places that we that we intentionally kept incredibly loose yeah uh, and then of course the the map is not the territory um, so that when you actually occupy the musical space, um, as opposed to mapping stuff out in a sort of, uh, you, know, uh, yes. you know, cognitive um, way, then, uh, or, or at least I, I can say for myself, the, by the time I started to occupy the actual territory that the map was supposed to suggest <laughs> I was as to it be in, uh, it changed. Yeah, we didn't realise there were hills and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so you were dealing with the unforeseen. Yes. As we say, it was mm, improvising absolutely, literally yeah. is what improvising Ideally. is. Ideally. Yes, yeah. yes. And you, you surprise yourself sometimes. Uh, and disappoint, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's lovely in music, isn't it, when there are su mm. surprise comes because you're reacting and reacting, you're inputting and outputting at exactly the same time. Very mm. unusual in... You know, to, yeah. to react to what Peter's doing, Pete reacting to Peter and Peter reacting to Pete while outputting at the same time. Yeah, it's it's not so easy. It's not all beer and skittles. It's true. Say. Yeah, but I think having that, you know, having the ability to, you know, influence and redirect and and shape as it as it progresses, I think is is a vitally important part of the yeah. the whole process. Do you? Feel him influencing and shaping you. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, I, I, when we spoke earlier, I, I was saying the, the feedback loop for me is the one that goes out um, whatever it is yeah. I've got going, which is not necessarily, it's just instantly formed, ideally. And it goes out, but it comes back with an, an extra substance, which may be an arched eyebrow. Or in this, on this occasion tonight, there was a, there was a, a fairly well-placed wink. <laughs> <laughs> Winks are great. Yeah. yeah. That I thought was great, Pete. Thank I mean, that's one of the funny things about, you know, when, when, especially as a duo, for me, the duo is the perfect combination because there's no confusion. As soon as you've got a trio, the lines of communication can be, you know, they're just more complex. But as a duo, it's, <clears throat> it's very, very I simple. So. I think so. It's, uh, um, I, 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 I thought about describing it as, um, you know, once, once it's past the duo, then, you, then you, um, you're making space, if it's improvisational, certainly, you're making space for another person. Whereas in a duo, I think you occupy the same space mm. and, and, and find... Um, fitment within yeah. that. That said, we are expanding and we're going to do a lot of collaborations with guests. Well, that's fascinating. So yeah. that's coming up in the future. That's exactly, so yeah. You might be a trio or even a quartet Absolutely. at some point yeah. for, for a one-off event. 
Yeah. Yep. That's a lovely way for musicians to work, isn't it? Yeah, brilliant, yeah. Quite luxurious in a way. You know, in the old days, we used to get tied into groups and that was it. Yeah. You know, you just, you just sat with Led Zeppelin for the next 25 years. Yeah. Kind of, kind of dull, whereas I think this, sorry, Led Zeppelin, uh, whereas I think this kind of way, fluid way of, of uh, making music is terrific, is that what does improvising give you? What do you hope to get out of an improvisation or improvising broadly? Mm. Um, I think it's having that, it's having the freedom mm. and, and the, um, the ability to shape it, I think, is a vitally important aspect of it and not being restricted by um, preconceptions about what should and shouldn't happen oh, yeah. to, to be able to you know yeah. have an open palette mm. and to um, paint like, as your mood dictates it's a bit like a potter with a wheel isn't it going like this he's, he's shaping shaping yeah. the clay underneath it and because percussion is so colorful and so powerful yeah that it, it's almost easy more likely that he's going to shape you than you shape him but the, the thing goes around yeah, of course. I think that's where listening comes in, you know. It really does. For me, it's all about listening. And I mean, and even in the <clears> sense that, you know, we're not playing to an audience in this performance, but there's a different psychology when, when you actually, the cameras are rolling and this is, it's completely different than rehearsing. You know, and you, I think you listen in a lot more detail, yeah, don't you? Yeah, I'm, I completely agree. It's, um, but, but I, you know, this thing about cognition is uh, embodied. Um, uh, you know, even e e even when, say, a Formula One driver's sitting on the the, the grid and he's imagining what's going to happen at the first corner, and he he, he, he embodies some of the moves in you know the system oh, yeah. map and territory. Mm -hmm. um, I I don't know, I'm, and for mm. myself, I don't know if I'm even doing that. It's 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 this balance. I think I like to think of, and but this is post-rationalised of of the balance between things that I might I know about and things that I have no idea about, and instantly trying to uh, trying to make them. Uh, form uh, like a like a, a, a well-formed sentence lovely yeah. lovely and for you that would be a good improvisation where that happens for you it, it, <clears throat> uh, yes uh, it's with the qualification that uh, you know it can come out well formed but not not be particularly of course not necessarily lead anywhere yeah. yes um, it, yes uh, so there's there's mm -hmm. always there's always some it measure comes back to preconception doesn't it if yeah. you haven't got a preconception about Trying what's going to happen here yeah yeah. Then theoretically, yeah, try not kind to. Of open. Uh, you know, try. That's the thing about having you know opportunity, and then uh, outcomes, hmm. and um, outcomes. I, opportunity we've got them in a duo. Yeah. Outcomes are unknowable. Yeah. I hope. Hmm. I think. So you're always sort of teetering on the, on a borderline between chaos and kind of, yes. <laughs> kind of composition and and sort yeah. of. Uh, you know, hysteria and surprise and all sorts of things that may be going on in the music. Yep. Because I'm not sure the audience really knows that. The, you mm. know, a lot of audiences, you say, or well, maybe you've noticed this, you say, we're going to improvise now, mm. you know, and you get a very cold reaction because most people think improvising is mm. something you do when something's gone wrong while you're waiting for the normal status to return. Yeah, that's right. I think it's because... That's partly often, in, in common language, that's often how it's yeah. used. Yeah, I mean, it's because it's lost any context in society, I think. I mean, if you go back, you know, through the centuries and you look at traditional musics around the world, such as Indian and, and, and different, uh, um, you know, different countries, improvisation's part of their cultural language, it really. It is. Um, yeah. It's still, yeah. Mm, indeed. Um, and, and now, you know, in, in, in kind of our environment, everything's compartmentalised in categories and in, in the form that things are delivered as products. Indeed. So I think that really dictates what, what the musicians, um, you know, the wealth of what the musicians get to do. Because suddenly a lot of the, the things that they mm. would really want to do and explore are kind of restrained by the conformity of the system. Yeah, very constricted and constrained by the product. Yeah, absolutely. Whereas this seems to be a process. Your group seems to be a process where exactly. you're more interested in that than actually having an outcome. Yeah. yeah, you know, which I think is a lovely way to go, yeah. and very common within jazz, of course, that, mm. that sort of approach. I was going to say, what happens for you next? Well, this is part of a, 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 an artist in residence series. Right. So the idea is that we put dif different collaborations together with yes. this. Obviously, the, you know, the next thing in terms of um, a physical event will be the broadcast of this um, uh, interview and, and performance, yeah. of course. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I'm sure there'll be a lot of stuff around that. And then, um, you know, then developing the Artists in Residence series and, you know, finding 
collaborators that will that will work with us in the way that you know kind of fit in you know and are comfortable sure. with sure i thought um it might be interesting to ask you what you're thinking about when you're playing it's so cinematographic you know, mm. in a way so very filmic yeah i thought these two guys would be perfect with a with a black and white screen you know in the old days when musicians used to accompany images mm. and in fact um some increasingly do just accompany images um, but I just wondered what your, what your, do you have a thought process going on? Are you thinking, wow, that thing that he's done is just really great. I'm going to mim mimic that, or, or I'm going to. F what's going on in your brain? Mm. Oh, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a, a big one. That's a tough. Yeah. That's I've got, different. I've got Sky Sports. I'm watching the, <laughs> watching the footy. Oh, gee, have Sky Sports. On. <laughs> oh, that's a tough. Thing. That. When's the check coming? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's. Do you want to kick off with that, or? I don't know if I can even answer that. Yeah, it's a, maintain, it's a complex one. Yeah. It maintain any uh, any notion of sensibility, um, because it's it's so. Well, of course, I pre I presume anyway, uh, Bill. You'll know that it's it's not necessarily um, that on so many occasions it's not ne there's no real musical correlation between uh, nothing that you could. Uh, um, have uh, described as being a musical um, correlation between a thought and what and, comes out, and of the what, com uh, what comes out, and and it's it's tough because it's the you know um, the the idea of uh, re perhaps at times being reliant upon uh, technique or known ways and familiar ways of being, yeah, and uh, and then. It, it, I don't know if it's bravery or foolhardy or, or of stepping of stepping away from that. And I mean, I had a bash at that tonight um, in the in the preamble to the, um, the. And what was the outcome of your bash? Um, how how happy were you with your bash? I can't. Uh, uh, for for me, the, um, the it's always the same thing. I'm fairly miserable, <laughs> um, um, and um, I really? can't really know. Yeah. Apart from well, Sky I mean, Sports, what are you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, certainly, I, I never. I mean, I mean, th in the past, you know, I kind of <clears throat> performances not working out have made me miserable. But now I'm kind of, I philosophised a lot about, um, you know, what you're doing, why you're doing, when you do it. Yeah. And for me, I don't really. Yeah. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, and you know, it doesn't change who you are as an individual. And so I think that's one perspective. And then there's the other perspectives of the, the technicality and the physicality, which you can easily and directly comprehend and put into words. Mm. Um, and then there's the more spiritual or, or uh, stuff that you can't put into words, the feeling, mm. you know, the mm. sensation. Um, and for me, it's kind of, I'm thinking of the sensation and I'm listening to what's going on and trying to respond and react. But it's that, um, it's the sensation that's guiding me really. Yes, And, and yes. It, it doesn't have any words really. That's, no, that's right. no, no it's, it's no. extraordinary why you pick up those strikers or beaters as opposed to those. Yeah, in the well, because these are louder. In the, in, the, <laughs> <laughs> in the moment, you know. Yeah. But also years of experience, of course, is yeah. guiding you there in the knowledge that this, will be, this is more Absolutely. appropriate at this moment. That one's more the other thing is, of course, that you need, you need uh, you know, a musical partner that listens. So without that, you know, you yeah, know, we can get work. down to some quite delicate stuff. And bear in yeah. mind, that's our first, yeah. you know, punt at it. Mm. So, uh, you know, I think um, with that, with, with someone that is also listening, that opens up massive, you know, tendrils of connectivity um, yeah. within the whole process. I'm with you. There, there are some things to avoid, aren't there, too, in the improvising? My little limited experience, you know, there's, there's some bad paths to go down, you know, endless repetition, for example. Yeah. You know, that's, that's part of a problem, actually, with touring, touring improvisers. Yeah. But after a week, you begin to feel yourself settling into things that, quote, unquote, worked. Mm. Yeah. You know, so there's an audience, and the audience is feeling bad. Oh, they go nuts. This is great. Well, let's keep that, you know, yeah. which is how rock groups work. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. That's and it's difficult to avoid that sometimes, yeah. I think. Mm. Do, you, do you sense that sometimes? Um, I yeah. I mean, to be honest, I haven't done that many pure improvisatory scenarios. And this is really. as close as you have come to ever. To that, yeah, to I'd say so. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. So you're, yeah, you're yeah. out there, Lockett. Yeah. You're out there on the edge. Yeah. Which is great. <laughs> great place to be. Drafty. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it can go wrong. Yeah. Badly wrong. Yeah. But it's lovely. Do you think we should fess up? Uh, that in fact, we do know each other. Yeah. I mean, I know you're you know, trying to stay a long way away from me over there, but we do, in fact, know each other. And we've had 
working relationships in the past, haven't we? We, we have indeed. You, you and I have banged into each other somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and it was, it was um, you came to the Tycho de Tabla gig at the Purcell Room. All right. That's how we first met. And then we met, you, you came back afterwards and we were having a chat. And um, like then we, we came up with the idea of, of doing something because I think you had a connection at um, Guildford on the Tonmaster course. That's right. We I subsequently went to Guildford University to, to study anyway. La yeah, later yeah. on, funnily oh, enough, yeah, 10 or 12 yeah, And yeah. I keep, every time I walk past that building, I thought of wow. the Lockett Bruford duo. Great. We were doing it that day or something. That's how it all started. And Peter, how did we meet? Um, I, 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 um, I saw your beautiful face and oh. heard your fabulous playing. Mm. <laughs> um, oh, oh. And, um, and it was on a Kazumi Watanabe al uh -huh. album, the um, Japanese virtuoso yeah. guitar player and it was you myself and Jeff Berlin mm -hmm. that um, that tried to inject Some the force of our personalities yeah. into the <laughs> did we succeed <laughs> um, I, I think on one or two occasions we, we actually managed to, yeah. uh, to pull something together because yes. remember we played loads of it live yeah as, as, as a we band did. we did in fact uh, uh, you know I, I remember doing very few overdubs uh, on the album. Yeah, you remember those days we used to go yeah. in the recording mm. studio yeah. and all play, one, two, yeah. three, four. Well, that's cool. how we did um, our Network of Sparks in, album, indeed. pretty much. Indeed. You know, a little, few, little bit of pre-production, but... It's a brave way to go, and it's lovely that it's not, yep. not perfect. Aren't those imperfections just wonderful things? You know what? I remember you saying to me, oh, when no. the album was mixed, it will take years for you to forget where the bodies are buried. <laughs> <laughs> and it's such a brilliant line, and I still I still say that to people, and it's just like it's a classic, and it's true. It's such a great way to to put it, you know. And furthermore, Bill, it was a highlight of my life. Oh, get out of get out of here! No, no, it was <laughs> it, it, it was great. I think I think thing. I think musicians and and listeners uh, both get very hung up on this idea of perfection that somehow there's something mm. wrong with a wrong note. Yeah. You know, whereas the most jazz musicians know it's only a wrong note so long as I haven't harmonized it in a different way, mm. you know, and that uh, music can be all sorts of things. It's got, it's riddled with imperfections. And yeah. I always feel sorry for the person who wishes to be perfect at music. Uh, you know, that comes <laughs> back to the improvisation thing as well, because yeah, accepting course. what is wrong and accepting, you know, it's like accepting yourself, you know, as an individual. Sometimes, sometimes you're wrong, sometimes you're uh, right. Of course. There are good things and bad things about everyone. Yes. And it's the same about any, you know, musical performance, yes, I think. Yes, I think and, absolutely and, right. Unless you can accept the whole, shebang yeah. you know it's almost the good, actually the, the good the bad the ugly yeah. you might be able to do it but you'll never see it mm. you know and i think it's important to be able to and we had this discussion with peter last night it's very important to be able to experience it mm -hmm. what what you're doing for me yeah personally. and then the and then all the gradations of uh, the concepts of perfection or imperfection uh, and 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 there's and therein lies the subject of bill your next uh, my next you book. Know, your next uh, oh, you're interview. very kind yes thank you can I say what a pleasure it's been listening to you guys. Thank you so much and for letting me interrogate you in this wow. vile and vicious fashion. Thanks, Bill. It's amazing uh, that you came down. And, and we're uh, very grateful you came down and thank you very much.